Now, in this next section, this next demo, we're gonna implement the in-meeting experience for the meeting, and then we're gonna improve upon the existing pre-meeting experience. In the pre-meeting experience we created, organizers are gonna be able to approve and modify the presentations that have been submitted by other meeting participants. And in addition, the in-meeting experience will display a different experience depending on if the participant is either a presenter, an organizer, or an attendee of the meeting in the side panel um, of the meeting. So this assumes that I've already gone through and created our Azure AD app um, and our user uh, and our data from our previous, um, our previous demo. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna update our meeting app experience um, that we created in the previous uh, demo um, to provide a different experience based on the current user's role within the meeting. So we're gonna update the pre-meeting experience if the current user is the meeting organizer. Meeting organizers will have the ability to approve the submitted topics for the meeting agenda. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up our tab that we created uh, for our existing meeting app project that we created. Um, and I wanna locate all of the uh, state um, constants that are created here. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to add in a new state object here that's going to be able to tell us if the user is currently the current user is also the meeting organizer. Now the next thing I'm going to want to do is I want to create uh, a new React hook. So let's go in and let's go find our last hook that we have registered, which is right here, and we're going to go ahead and paste this in. So what is this code doing? What this code is going to do is that when the current user is updated or the online meeting is updated, I'm then going to do a check to make sure that those are both defined. And if they are, I'm going to look at the current online meeting that we retrieved from Microsoft Graph, look at his participants collection and the, org and the current organizer, and I'm going to find look at their ID and see if it matches the currently signed in user. And if it is, I'm going to set the currently signed in user to true. Um, otherwise, I'm going to set it um, equal to false. Now the next thing I have to do is to add a handler that's gonna to toggle the topic status um, on our list. So I'm gonna do this by creating a function here that's called the toggle, uh, let's see, let's go find where we wanna drop this. Let's put this right after our submit handler that we created. Okay, so what this uh, method is gonna do, this toggle standup status, it's gonna take in a topic ID, which is the string, and what it's gonna do is go look at all the, the current topics that we have. It's gonna find the one that, we're currently, that we currently have selected, um, and it's gonna flip his approved status to the inverse of what it currently is set to. So this list of topics here that we're creating, we're taking the current stand-up topics that we've retrieved from our in-memory database, or our JSON database, we're, we're gonna get all of the items back except for the current one that, is, that, we're, that we have selected, we're flipping the value of the currently one of the one that's currently selected, and then we're going to add it back to the collection and save those changes back to uh, our database. Now, the next thing we have to do is update the user experience. So when the user isn't the meeting organizer, the current experience is not going to change. We want to leave it the exact same. But if the current user is the organizer, when they select a single topic from the list, they should see a new toolbar action to toggle the status of the topic. So what I'm gonna do is inside of our, our pre-meeting, our, um, our method that gives us our pre-meeting experience that you, have, that you have right here, what I wanna do is I wanna find the section where I'm creating the list of all of the data that we're gonna show uh, in the experience here. So you notice here we're, we, have our, we have a status here that's set to the approved status, that'll dis it's a Boolean that's gonna display either approved or pending. So what I wanna do is I want to add a new property to the object that's being returned. So this is the object that's being returned. I want to add a new property to this immediately after our status property. So right here, we'll add a new property, and our new property is called actions. Now the action property is, is something that the list is going to be looking for. Um, this defines an action called toggle status. And we're gonna use this to detect which action in the toolbar was selected. So in this case, it's toggle status, right? So you see it listed right there. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna update the actual list so that we know that if 
if the items in the list are selectable, which will cause this toggle status to be available for us. So what I'm gonna do is go back down to our list that we have right here, and I'll add a property to our list. Now we gotta go a little bit farther. Here's our list. And I'll do this right after the rows section. So I'll say that, that it's selectable, and that's gonna be set on if the current user um, is or is not uh, the organizer. Now, this on interaction thing, what this is gonna do is this is gonna allow us to define um, handlers for different interactions that happen. So we already have one to check to see if the action is in the toolbar, and if the action is set to um, add topic, then we show the new form. We've already seen that work. Well, let's do the same thing, but we'll create a new one here for toggle status. And that's gonna use our toggle the stand-up status for the action that's been, uh, that's currently defined. All right, so let's see how this looks. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna restart um, our web server by running gulp ingrok serve. I don't need to reinstall the app um, because we've, we're, we didn't make any changes to the app definition. So I don't need to re-upload anything. No new permissions were applied, no new IDs, nothing changed with the structure of the app. The only thing that's really changed uh, is the actual code um, in, the, uh, in the UX of our application. So we'll go ahead and let this, we'll let this, uh, let this start up. So what I first did is I logged in as Alex and I came back into this meeting. And remember, Alex is just an attendee. But you can see here that when I'm signed in as Alex, Alex has the exact same view that, that he had before. He can still add uh, topics, um, but what Alex can't do is he can't select any of these meeting items or these, these topics and modify them uh, for, um, uh, to modify their, their presenting status to, see, to mark them from pending to approved. So I'm gonna go ahead and sign out and sign back in as Megan. Now I'm gonna go into our stand-up agenda and because it's going, our app is gonna notice that Megan, who's currently lined in, signed in, is the meeting organizer. We can see here where Megan can now select one of these different items uh, in our list, and she can approve the different items. So you see here, I just went through and approved it. It's now been checked over to approved. I select a different one, and I can approve that one. And let's come back over here, and we will. I'll select a couple more. We'll have we'll have two approved by Megan and one approved uh, for Alex uh, to present. 